Today I'm going to be taking a quick first look at the recent release of Zorin OS version 17.2. This just came out a few days ago. Zorin OS is one of the more popular desktop Linux distributions. It's based on Ubuntu and it comes with a really customized and very beautifully themed GNOME based desktop. I'm going to run through a quick installation of Zorin OS inside a virtual machine. So when you first boot into Zorin OS, the installer automatically launches. This is the very familiar Ubiquity installer that Ubuntu used for so many years. Now Ubuntu has recently created a new installer that they're moving to, but the Ubiquity installer is still a very easy to use installer. If you're a brand new user to Linux, this is very easy. You click OK three or four times and you're pretty much done. So at the very beginning, Pick your language, this is the language for the installer itself, and then choose Install Zorin. And then Keyboard Layout, English US has been automatically chosen for me, and that is the correct keyboard layout, so all I need to do is just click Continue. Next up, do you want to download updates while installing Zorin OS? It's ticked on by default. I would leave that ticked on by default. And then do you want to install third-party software for graphics, Wi-Fi, additional media formats, etc.? Yes, this is ticked on by default. I strongly suggest leaving that ticked on by default. That's going to give you your proprietary drivers for your graphics cards, your Wi-Fi chips. It's going to give you your multimedia codecs. And then finally, do you want to participate in a census? So this is analytics. By default, it looks like it is turned on, but you can tick this box here to not participate in that survey. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to click continue. Next up, the installation type. Do you want to erase the disk and give Zorin OS the full hard drive in your computer, or in this case, the full virtual hard drive in this virtual machine that I'm installing to? And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and click install now. And then it gives me this little pop up where I could review the partition scheme it's going to create. It's all looks fine. So I'm going to click continue. Next up, we need to choose our time zone. It has correctly chosen the central time zone in the US for me. So I just need to click continue. And finally, we need to create our username and password. I'm going to call my user DT. And then I need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. And then verify the strong and complicated password. And then finally, do we want to log in automatically? That's ticked off by default. I would leave that ticked off. You want to have to enter a password to get into any computer just for privacy reasons. And then finally, require my password to log in is ticked on and that's what you want. You want to have that ticked on and then click continue and away we go. And that is the installer. Now, the installation typically takes about five to 10 minutes to complete on my hardware. So I'm going to step away, grab a cup of coffee. I'll be back once Zorin OS 17.2 has finished installing. And the installation completed just fine. That just took a few minutes. And now I need to click this button here that says restart now to complete the installation. So let me do that. And the machine rebooted just fine, and we get this beautiful desktop environment that's been very nicely themed and customized. It's really a gorgeous desktop environment, and it's also a really nice desktop environment for new Linux users, especially for those coming from Windows, because if you're used to, say, Windows 7, for example, where you had the panel at the bottom of the screen with some quick launchers, and then you have your little start menu, if you will. You know, anybody coming from Windows to Linux using Zorin OS as their first desktop Linux distribution should be a nice, easy transition. Now, when you first launch the desktop, you do get this little welcome application and you can see the button down here, start tour. So I could click that button and it takes me through this little slideshow telling me about Zorin OS. So this is something you probably do want to go through if you're brand new to Zorin OS, just to get that little quick welcome application there. And then when you're done, just close it out. Now let's take a quick look at what is installed out of the box on Zorin OS. So if I break it down by category, let's go into accessories here and we have clocks, files, text editor, and weather. So a lot of the standard GNOME applications, files of course, is going to be the Nautilus file manager, which is GNOME's file manager. If I go to about, this is files 42.6. Uh, if I hit control H on the keyboard, now I can see the hidden files and directories as well as your standard files and directories. Let me close out the Nautilus file manager and get back into the menu system here. We also had text editor. Now this is GNOME's 
plain text editor called gedit. This is gedit 41.0, which is actually a pretty good little text editor. It is actually, it looks very plain and simple, but it's got some nice features to it. Now under the graphics category, we have our image viewer, we have LibreOffice Draw, and we have photos. If I go into photos, this is going to be your little photo manager, and this is Photos 42.0, so access and organize and share your photos on GNOME. So it's one of the GNOME applications. Let's close that out. Under the internet category, we have Firefox as our default web browser. Let's launch Firefox, see what version they're on. So this ISO was released just a few days ago. Now, Zorn OS is based on Ubuntu. They are basing off of the Ubuntu LTS. And this is Firefox version 130.0.1 64-bit. And let's close that out. Also under internet, we had Remina, which is a remote desktop application. That's something that, you know, most desktop computer users probably won't have a need for. That's kind of for nerds that have to uh, remotely log in to other computers through SSH, for example. We also have an Office category here, and the LibreOffice suite is installed. So we have LibreOffice Calc, Draw, Impress, and Writer all installed. If I open LibreOffice Writer, let's check out what version of LibreOffice we're on. If I go to the menu and LibreOffice, about LibreOffice, this is version 24.8.1.2. Under the sound and video category, we have Bracero, which is our disc burning utility, which uh, not a lot of people burn disc anymore. I sometimes still burn CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, so it's nice that for me, somebody like me, you know, I, I would have a use for this, but a lot of people these days don't even know what optical discs are, so uh, it's interesting that they still ship that out of the box. Cheese is your webcam application. Uh, Rhythmbox is a audio player, very nice little audio player. If I go to About Rhythmbox, this is Rhythmbox 3.4.4, uh, one of the GNOME applications again. Also under sound and video, we had our videos player. So this is GNOME videos. And let's see what version we're on for this as well. So this is videos also known as Totem. And I was looking for a version number, but I guess I don't get that. Maybe I get that. No. Yeah, I'm not sure where I would get the version information here. I would have thought help would have given me that information. Oh, well, we don't get the uh, version of Totem. Now under the system tools category, you have a lot of your standard preferences and settings and things, but one thing that I do want to check out, because they did do some work on this for this release, is the appearance application. So let's go to Zorn Appearance, and of course we can choose our theme as far as our layout of the panels and everything. Right now it is on this theme here, but if I wanted to, I could select a different theme and it's a little bit of a different appearance. Uh, you can tell that the taskbar looks a little different. I have the icon and then the window title and then it's underlined where if I go back to the classic theme, it's just the icon. So the icon without the window title. So that's interesting. You also have this where the taskbar is centered in the bottom panel, kind of like the way Windows 11 does things now. And this here, the uh, panel is now moved to the top. It's more of like your traditional GNOME style panel. So for me, I'm gonna go back to the default panel. I quite like the looks of the default panel. Also, you can see get more desktop layout so you can uh, get some more layouts by upgrading to Zorin OS Pro. So I'm using the free version of Zorin, but they do have a pro version available for I think $49.99. You pay for the pro version and you get even more custom theming options. If I go into theme, uh, for me, I like dark theme, so I'm going to go ahead and make that choice right now. I prefer, much prefer dark themes over light themes. And then effects, uh, we can enable or disable animations. We can enable the 3D cube and all of that. Uh, desktops, I'm assuming this is where we could turn on desktop icons if you want to see this stuff. Now, for me, I don't want to see any of these, so I would leave that off by default. Now, some of the changes they made for this release, I believe if I go back to theme, uh, instead of Zorin, if I go to other, 
They have here applications, icons, cursor, and shill. Cursor, I believe, is something new they've added because I, I guess people wanted the ability to change their cursor, and now you have a list of things to choose from as far as your system cursor. Uh, shill, that's interesting. Shill is here, but I don't have a drop down menu. I guess if I installed extra shills, maybe I would have something to choose from there. I'm not sure. Icons, this is the icon sets that are currently installed, and applications, Edwayda, Edwayda Dark high contrast. I'm just going to leave all of that as the defaults. Another new addition to the appearance application is the Windows tab here. If you click on Windows, now you can actually change some of the styling of your Windows. For example, you now have the ability to toggle between uh, the buttons being on the left or the right. And that is nice because I do not like having my window close and minimize buttons on the right. I think it makes much more sense to have that on the left. The reason is most things on your computer or when your web browsers, everything tends to happen on the left side of the screen anyway. It makes much more sense just for not having a lot of mouse travel to also have your buttons over here on the left side of the screen. So that's something I typically turn on if it's available. You can also set your uh, actions for double click, middle click, secondary click, you also have some options as far as Windows Focus as well. I'm going to leave all of that as the defaults. And finally, one last thing they added. If you go to the interface section, you have now the opportunity to turn on and off overlay scroll bar. So if you don't like having the overlay scroll bar on the side of your windows, uh, what the overlay scroll bar is, is like this here, you can see this window, it would scroll. And if I wanted to actually see the scroll bar, I have to go to the edge of the window and then it kind of pops out. You know, you get a very small little hint that it's there and then it pops out. So you have a little bit more to grab there. But if you just want a permanent scroll bar there all the time, go to interface and then turn off the overlay scroll bar. And then if I go back to the windows category where I had, you know, you see now I don't have to pop that out. It's just always there. So I know some people find the overlay scrolls, uh, scroll bars kind of hard to to navigate as far as sometimes they're too small, sometimes it's hard to tell if they're even there. So again, if you want to turn that off, you now have that opportunity here in the Zorn appearance application. So since Zorn is an Ubuntu based Linux distribution, if I hit Control Alt T, it should bring up a terminal and it does. Let me go ahead and make the terminal full screen and I'm gonna zoom way in here and I'm gonna run uname-r. Let's get the kernel version. We're on 6.8.0. And since this is a GNOME based desktop, I'm not exactly sure if they're defaulting to using Xorg or Wayland. I could find that information very easy in the terminal though. I could echo xdg underscore session underscore type. And you can see they are using Wayland as their display server. Let's see if Pipewire is installed. So let's do a simple where is space Pipewire. And Pipewire is installed. You can see there is the location to the Pipewire binary. So they're using Pipewire as their default audio server. Let's see how many packages are installed via the apt package manager. So if I do an apt space list space dash i for installed, this will list out all of the installed packages line by line. So it spits out a very long list. Now let's count the number of lines in that. So I'm going to up arrow and pipe that command into WC-L for a line count. And there are 1,888 lines in that output. So that means there's 1,888 packages installed out of the box on Zorin OS. For those of you wondering, since it's Ubuntu based, if snaps are available out of the box, let me do a where is snapd. And snapd is installed out of the box. Are there anything installed as a snap out of the box? No snaps are installed. So snapd is there. So you can just go ahead, install things via snap, but nothing is installed via snap out of the box. Let me also do a where is flat pack. Let's see if flat pack is here. Flat pack is here as well. Let's see if there are any flat packs installed out of the box. And there are a few, uh, apparently Zorin does package some of their themes 
as a flat pack. So that's how they're packaging some of their custom theming. So snaps and flat packs available for those that want them. Of course, if you don't want snaps and flat packs, I know some people have problems with these containerized package formats. Of course, you don't have to use them. And finally, let me close the terminal. One last thing I wanted to, to do is go ahead and check out the wallpaper. So I'm gonna right click on the desktop. I'm gonna go to display settings and let me see if I got any better wallpapers to choose from. So since I'm using a dark theme, I wanna use a light wallpaper. I think that makes the most sense, just for contrast. You know, this really white, bright wallpaper really makes sense against a dark theme. That just really stands out. So that's a nice wallpaper. That's a really nice wallpaper too. It's really white, but it's got some color in it as well. Uh, this one here might work as well. This. Uh, Desert sand next to an ocean was really cool. For something more minimal, this kind of pinkish brick pattern is also not bad. Ah, here's one. Some white flowers would look great, again, against this dark theme. Finally, this seascape, right? That's not bad for an aerial view. Matter of fact, I kind of like the blue. I'm going to go with that. So there you have it, a very quick and cursory look at the recently released Zorn OS 17.2. Zorn OS, again, one of the more popular desktop Linux distributions. It's, you know, very new user friendly and it's a very attractive Linux distribution. So those of you that want to check it out, I strongly recommend going to ZornOS.com and grabbing the latest ISO. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode, Matt, James, Steve, Armor, Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Mythos. Erjan, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tenren, War Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willy. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Zorin OS would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.